my background's marketing and he's secretly an inventor I'm sure he is because <laughs> he doesn't come up with just one amazing idea he's got four or five stuck in his pocket his brain just works in a different way I think <laughs> It's our combined strength that hopefully will win over the Dragons and make it into something that could be a global brand. Hello Dragons, I'm Annika Chohan. I'm John Chohan. And we're here asking for £50,000 for 10% equity in our brand iStay. iStay is a non-slip shoulder strap. It's a father and daughter innovation. The idea came about whilst we were travelling and experiencing our laptop bag slipping off our shoulder. It's comfortable, it allows airflow, and it has um, ergonomic benefits. To... Sorry. It has um, ergonomic benefits. It's a patent-pending design, and it's been registered in many different countries. You can clip it into any bag that has D-rings, there are many laptop bags on the market, but none of them have the unique strap that we have. The iStay brand was launched in 2012, and in 2013, we managed to do £130,000 worth of turnover and a net loss of £75,000. In 2014, we did £240,000 and a net loss of £22,000. In the year 15, we did... £290,000, a net loss of 21000 In the last six months, we've now managed to do £200,000 worth of turnover and a net return of £20,000. With the investment money, we're looking to create brand awareness. We're also looking for your advice, guidance and expertise. Thank you for listening. We welcome any questions. Can I try it? Of course. Yes. A luggage strap that stays put is the offering from father and daughter double act, Annika and John Chohan. Yeah. You have to lean quite a lot. Yeah. Can I try? They're hoping a £50,000 investment in return for 10% equity will help keep their bag accessory business in the black. I kind of get where you're coming from. Tuka Suleiman and Nick Jenkins seem satisfied it delivers on its promise to stay in place but can the business deliver a profitable return for an investor? Sarah Willingham's first with the questions. I was, uh, I was sat here looking at that thinking, but, you know, no one's going to buy that because, you know, the, the straps on the bags are perfectly adequate. I've never had a problem with it before. Why would you put it on a rucksack? But you've sold a lot. Yes. And I must admit, that's really thrown me. This is a replacement bag strap, so if you have a bag that you already like, you can just clip that in and use it for that purpose. But if you want to um, purchase one of our bags, they all come with the iStay straps. OK, so in terms of your split of sales, now I'm not surprised that your sales are as high as they are. I thought you'd sold that many just the strap. replacement straps. I was like, wow. So the majority of your sales is actually in the range of bags. Yes, yes it is. Um, just looking at your numbers, why is it that you've made such a loss? I think initial investment was about £100,000 that we put in, and so that played into the first year. Yes, but that wouldn't affect your net profit. Um, the stock, the... We have... Currently, we have something like £120,000 of paid stock that's at landed cost. And initially, the way our accountant seems to have worked it out was to say, look, you've invested £100,000, you have put a lot of money into the stock, wages, staff, etc. So all of that seemed to come into play. Three consecutive years of net losses aren't sitting easy with Sarah Willingham. Now, luxury accessory retailer Tuka Suleiman has concerns about the baggage in their balance sheet. You said that your initial investment in total was about 100,000? Yes. And you've lost over the three or four years about 120,000? Yes. So somewhere you must owe somebody a lot of money. We don't, actually. Everything is paid for. All the uh, stuff that we have in the warehouse is literally paid for. But you said you, the business started with 100,000? Yes. 
and over the three years, you've lost 120,000. So you haven't made any money. Most of our money is sitting in stock at the moment. No, but I can't work that out. <sighs> Am I not thinking straight? I don't know, maybe, maybe it's me. Uh, sorry. The hundred thousand that was invested. The hundred thousand is owed to, to to Falcon. Oh, who's oh. the hundred thousand is owed to yeah, Falcon? Okay. Sorry, right. now you're right. Right. Yeah, Okay, sorry. So who's Falcon? Falcon is the company that I own with my wife. Ah, now okay. So so sorry. basically, you have put in two hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. No, that's what we put in. What took us? Trying to uh, trying to get across is that if you if you start a business on day one and you put a hundred thousand pounds into it, and over the course of the next three years you lose one hundred and twenty one thousand pounds in trading losses, you can't then still have one hundred and twenty thousand pounds worth of stock at, at the end of that, unless unless you owe money for the stock. Where, where well, unless your extra... figures are not right, well, of course. You, you you must have put two hundred and twenty thousand pounds into it. Confusion reigns as Tuka Suleiman and Nick Jenkins are forced to second-guess the accounts to get to the bottom of the company's year-on-year -year losses. Can Peter Jones get a handle on the Chohan family business finances? Your first year, you put £100,000 in, your, your wife and yourself, yes? Yes. So, end of that year, how much money did you lose? The 75000 in the first year. And how did you finance that loss? Uh, must have been from our from our Falcon. main business, from our Falcon business. Hold on, I, uh, I must uh, be so, going mad. No, you so had a, no, you've got a hundred in no, these figures you gave 000. us. So you now got exactly. twenty five thousand exactly. left. Exactly. Okay. So you've still got twenty five thousand left. What happened in the next year? We lost twenty two thousand pounds. So you've now got three thousand pounds left. What happened at the end of your third year? Third year we lost twenty thousand pounds. How could you lose twenty thousand when you've only got three thousand left? We must have put more money in, Peter. <laughs> must have put more money in from Falcon. Finally, some clarity. But John's uncertainty as to how much money from his existing business has been pumped into this new one hasn't done him any favours with Peter Jones. Will Deborah Meaden be any more understanding? Annika, John, I actually, Annika, you've got your investor. You are. You're, you are the natural investor. I don't know what's happened to you in the day. And you must be good at what you do. You're running a successful business that's turning out a good profit, John. Yes. So I don't know what happened in the den today, but you were unable to explain those, those finances, which always makes us a little bit nervous, particularly with an experienced business person. I won't be investing. I'm out. It's an open and shut case for Deborah Meaden, who very quickly declines the opportunity to invest. Which way will Tuka Suleiman go? There's no way you want me as a shareholder in the family business. I'd ask you to fire your dad or something. And you wouldn't want that, you know, or fire you. You use your father's overhead, reduce your overheads, get back into a good profit, but do it as a family. Yeah. You don't need me and I'm out. Thank you. It, I think when there is such a closely knit family, you know, if I ever wanted to push something through, I would get nowhere. You would gather together and I would lose every single battle. And it does make it, yeah, it makes it very, very difficult for an outside investor. So I'm not gonna invest, I'm out. Three dragons have now declared themselves out. Nervous about the numbers, and skeptical about investing in such a tight-knit family enterprise. Only Nick Jenkins and Peter Jones remain. Can either of them be persuaded to help keep the business in the black? I think you've invented a great product, and I'm sure uh, you'll probably make 40,000 profit this year, maybe 100,000 profit the year after that, a couple of hundred thousand after that. So I think there's a, there's a window of opportunity for you to make some money. After that, you might find that everyone else looks and thinks, hang on, why is this, why is, why is this ice day selling all these, all these things? Ah, we need to improve our strap. And then suddenly all the other manufacturers come up to the level of your game. So it's difficult as a, as a, as a long-term uh, investment. So I'm afraid for that reason, uh, I'm out. Thank you.
What does Falcon, what does that turn over? Falcon turns over 1.75 million. 1.75 million, what did you make? We made about 120,000 pounds profit. This business that you started three years ago, was this started by your daughter? Um, jointly, it jointly. was both of us together. Yeah, but your dad lent you the money? Yes. To start your business? Yeah. I think it's fantastic. Father's helping daughter create a business. But oh, I'm very, very concerned. Neither of you know how to run a business. I'm, I'm amazed that actually you've done incredibly well, Father. Thank you. <laughs> to make that profit. This is ultimately a business to get your daughter on her journey, which I applaud. But I don't want to be part of that. Her next start of her journey should be doing it for herself, understanding how to run a company first before launching one of your own. I think you're too early. You don't know enough about business. So that's the reason why I'm not going to invest and say that I'm out. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. A clean sweep from the dragons, as confusing family finances mean I stay goes. We just let ourselves down on the numbers. But I still feel very positive because I know that we've got something unique. I know we've got a successful business already. We're still going to do it, just maybe at a slower pace.